Rome's first step in achieving greatness would be to subdue her Italian neighbors. Shortly after the kings were expelled, the Latin League attacked Rome. This conflict ended in a treaty known as the Fetus Cassianum. This treaty required that Rome and the Latin League contribute equally to common defense, share some citizen rights, and equally divide the spoils of war with Rome receiving half and the Latin League also receiving half. Due to this, Rome was on equal footing with the entirety of the Latin League. Rome was the de facto leader and had the sole ability of summoning the entire allied force. As Roman strength grew, Etruscan strength conversely declined. This left Rome with better leverage to influence and control the region. The Romans allied with people called the Hynerci, and this left the Equi and the Volsci cut off from one another. This allowed Rome to conquer both of these tribes, further solidifying local dominion. Veii, which was one of the wealthiest Etruscan cities, was defeated in 396 by Rome after Rome tunneled underneath their walls. What happens next is pretty comical, despite that in war people tend to, you know, die. The Gauls were a group of people that lived in modern France and northern Italy. Usually, the Etruscans prevented Gallic tribes from invading central Italy. However, with the surge of Gauls pouring over the Alps and the Etruscans being severely weakened, there was minimal resistance against Gallic armies. In 390 BC, the Romans mustered a force and met invading Gallic forces at the river Allia, a few miles north of Rome. Romans were used to fighting in a Grecian style in a disciplined and organized phalanx. However, the Gauls simply swarmed and attacked the Roman force on all sides, thereby completely routing the Roman army. In Rome, most people fled the city. The Gauls tried to capture the Capitoline Hill but they failed after sacred geese honked as the Gallic forces advanced. They plundered the city, and after being paid a huge ransom, the Gauls left and returned north. Rome was severely weakened by this attack. Latin tribes began to revolt, and the Etruscans, Equi, and Volsci all attacked Rome. However, Rome persevered through rebuilding their defenses, defeating their enemies, recapturing lost territory, and by settling affairs with the Latins. The next target of Roman expansion were the Samnites. They were fierce mountain tribes of south central Italy. Due to mutual expansion and border tension, the Romans and Samnites went to war. The first Samnite war, which lasted from 343 BC to 341 BC, was fought over Capua. Rome retained control over Capua, and the Samnites retained all of their territory as well. The Latin League was concerned over Roman expansion. The Latin League as a whole revolted against Rome. It was unsuccessful, and Rome defeated the entire League in 338 BC. Rome disbanded the Latin League and gave citizenship and privileges to Latin tribes in return for required service to Rome. Rome was considerably stronger after they consolidated control over the numerous tribes of the Latin League. Rome shortly after went to war against the Samnites once again. However, no progress was attained by either side. After a Roman army was lured into a pass, cut off, captured, and forced to surrender. The war ended, but Rome refused the terms of surrender. This war lasted from 328 BC to 303 BC. While Rome didn't necessarily gain any territory from the Samnites, Rome did learn how to advance and evolve their army. Under the leadership of Appius Claudius Siccus, the Appian Way was constructed. This road, along with others to be constructed, would help the emerging empire be defensible, unified, and economically viable. The Third Samnite War, which lasted from 298 to 290 BC, was some serious business. Roman aggression brought it into the crosshairs of not only the Samnites, but also the Etruscans and the Gauls. They fought against Rome, but the progress of Rome had already crossed the Rubicon. Oh, wait, sorry, that's another spoiler alert. But, uh, it'll be a few more videos until we get there. In 290 BC, the Samnites surrendered to the Romans and were assimilated into the status of Roman allies. Over the next few years, Rome would continue to dominate all of Italy, excluding the southern portion, commonly called Magna Graecia. The region of Magna Graecia was dominated by Greeks. The Roman conquest of the Samnites placed them at odds with the Greek colonies in the area. Eventually, the city of Tarentum attacked the Romans and called King Pyrrhus of Epirus to aid them. Pyrrhus was a relative of Alexander the Great, and he aimed to be another version of him. 
he joined the war against Rome. He showed up to Italy in 288 BC with 25,000 soldiers and 20 war elephants. He won various battles, but at a cost so high he may as well have lost. The term Pyrrhic victory originated from him and his wars in Italy. Pyrrhus was hoping for a massive uprising of Italian tribes against the Romans, but this never happened. As such, Pyrrhus eventually left Italy. Tarentum was left to its own and it surrendered to Rome in 272 BC. Rome now had control over all of Italy. Rome had also captured Andronicus, a Greek slave, who introduced the Romans to Greek drama and epic by translating the Odyssey into Latin. As Horace, a Roman poet put it, captive Greece captured its captor. With this, Rome solidified control over the entire Italian peninsula. This brought it closer into contact with a Mediterranean trading empire named Carthage. The two would fight a series of wars for status of master of the Mediterranean. But that's for next episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Next time, we will be discussing the Punic Wars.